Hey you guys! Um, I'm excited to share this video and I honestly didn't even know I was going to make a video up until literally an hour ago um, because I just got my confirmation that this is pretty big. Okay, so I've got so much to catch you guys up on. Uh, I've been, I know, away uh, for a while. We were actually out of state for almost two weeks and since getting back we've just been, you know, going catching up, getting all kinds of stuff done around the house and stuff. So anyway, um, I um, been keeping up with everybody, um, following the discussions in Zab's intercessory group, following the discussions going on with a lot of my brothers and sisters on YouTube. And, um, but at the same time, trying not to get too consumed with that and really just listening hard for God's voice. Um, and, and keeping Jesus just at the forefront of everything. And I just feel such urgency. Uh, everything is just lining up. I mean, we we couldn't all agree this well, even if we tried, but so many things are just, so many brothers and sisters are, are just seeing so many things where it's all clicking into place. Okay, so let me get to my dream. Um, now, I had been praying pretty urgently to Jesus and, um, I feel like, and I said this a little bit in my last video, I just feel like something's different now. Like I, he was, he was coming on, you know, so coming on gangbusters about a year ago and just really waking me up. And I know it's because my job was different back then. He had a lot to tell me because I had a lot, he wanted, he had a lot of messages he wanted me to relate to my brothers and sisters. And a lot of it was warning stuff and sounding the alarm as a watchman. Since that job has stopped, now I'm my focus is with my intercessory work and with my group and doing prayers. And, and I've learned so much with spiritual warfare. All my brothers and sisters have. We've just been really sharing our testimonies with each other, sharing our insights from other really uh, seasoned um, um people of God who, who really know this, who really know about spiritual warfare. And we've been really upping at the strength of our prayers. And anyway, so, but I can just tell that my dreams had changed. And so I, I just w was wanting more from Jesus, but I, at the same time, I was thinking, you know, am I doing something wrong? And I, we go through this a lot and I know I've, you know, mentioned that in another video. And, um, we can't help but think that sometimes when we feel like we can't hear his voice quite so clearly. So, um, I, I I didn't realize my prayers had changed though until just last night, and I, I did my usual nighttime prayers before going to bed, and then something's been happening, which I'm noticing is happening to a lot of brothers and sisters, and that is we are getting woken up throughout the night, and I used to just you know write it off as okay, I'm just having you know a weird night, I'm just waking up, and usually I'll fall right back to sleep, but it was just really odd because I'm noticing it's almost always happening between two and three o'clock. And then again, um, after four o'clock or five o'clock and, and I'm realizing there, you know, these go by the third and fourth watches. There's the first, second, third and fourth as is in biblical times. That's how they kind of mark their days. Um, 12 hours of daytime, 12 hours of nighttime. And, and I can put this in the notes too, just if you guys are interested, I'm sure many of you already know about the, the different watches. Um, but from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. is the first watch. 9 a.m. to 12 noon is the second watch. 12 to 3 o'clock p.m. is third watch. And then 3 to 6 p.m. is fourth watch. Then it continues and goes on through the night. So then 6 to 9 p.m. is first watch. 9 to 12 midnight is second watch. 12 to 3 a.m. third watch. And then 3 to 6 a.m. is fourth watch. So it's between midnight to 3 last night I woke up. It was like... 2:40 in the morning and then um and i'll tell you what i did at that moment and then i again woke up later on it was like four something i can't think 4 11 or something and that was fourth watch so anyway um so i have been noticing after really paying attention to this that my my wake up times were following these watch times so i used to just wake up and then go back to sleep again until i realized that i should be praying this is what this goes back to the garden of gethsemane when jesus said stay up and watch with me as he's going through all that turmoil knowing what's about to happen and his disciples kept falling asleep and we notice how we we know how important that was and the bible has just been coming alive to me so much more recently than ever before i'm seeing so many parallels from like the book of esther and how that's relevant now and um also the book of ruth and how that is relevant now with the bride all that stuff and i'm like oh my gosh this is so there's so much going on here um so anyway so i wake up the first time 
And I, I wrote all this in my journal this morning because um, I wasn't sure yet if, if I needed to make a video because I was still trying to understand the dream. Okay, so I wrote down, I woke up at 2 a.m. It was a little after 2, I couldn't remember exactly. I think it was like 2.40, I think. And um, I wrote down that these are the uh, third and fourth watches that I woke up. And so when I woke up, I went into my prayer closet to pray. But this prayer time was different. And I don't know what it was that suddenly made me change the way I prayed. But I used to pray this way where I would just talk to Jesus. You know, just like, you know, hey, and talking like a friend. I'd be driving my car or in the closet just talking. And then over time, somehow I got really, really serious. That kind of fell away. And I became, and I, part of it felt like I need to be more you know, reverent to Jesus. I need to be more fearful with fear and trembling to my Lord God. And I would imagine him just huge as a mountain and just, you know, and I got a little more fearful with my prayers, a little bit more urgent, a little bit more scared or, or, you know, and I was never frightened of God, but I just felt like I need to be very respectful and, and all this stuff. And so I think I lost something. Well, somehow something changed last night when I went to bed, I had a dream, but I can't remember it, but I woke up out of the dream and I said, I need to go pray. It's 2.40 in the morning. It's the third watch. I just feel like I should get up and pray. So I went into the closet and I just started talking to Jesus. <laughs> and I felt him like right there. It was the weirdest thing. It was like that fear just fell away. And I felt like a child again. And I realized this is what he means when he says, be as a young child, just talk to me. And let me see, I'll tell you what I wrote in my journal. Um, I just began talking to Jesus in a regular way, and it was the way I used to talk to him before I felt I should pray with more reverence and fear. Last night I prayed as a child would pray. I began to talk about what I was going to do when I finally got to see him face to face. I am, um, I, when, when, you know, when he catches us up, what is the, and I just was just enjoying a conversation with Jesus. And I said, the first thing I want to do was hug your neck. <laughs> I was telling Jesus, I'm going to hug you. And as they say in the South, you know, I'm going to hug your neck. Um, and then the next thing, I said, I'm, Jesus, I'm just going to take you by the face and look at those eyes once and for all. What color eyes do you have? Because everybody argues about that. They've seen them with brown eyes. They've seen them with blue eyes, multicolored eyes. And I was just joking. I'm like, once and for all, I'm going to find out what color eyes you have. And then, and it's so funny because the atmosphere in my prayer closet was really funny. I swear I could feel his humor. Like he was really enjoying this. Um, and then I, I kind of felt like, you know, and then what, one thing I'd really like to do, Jesus, you washed your disciples' feet, but nobody washed yours. I Just in honor of you, I'd like to wash your feet. And I just wanted to just show my love and, and just the joy I would feel in being a servant to Jesus. And um, and it, I just felt such delight. Like he was just really taking such delight in this conversation, just me being me and me being honest. And I, and I realized it's one thing to show you know, when you pray with reverence and you show that respect and you show that belief in faith, but, but talking to him also just as a person, it shows that you're letting him into your heart, that you, you also look to him as a friend, as a confidant, that you can just open up and, and you feel him. I felt him so strongly. And this was like, again, like, you know, after two in the morning and I'm just talking away to Jesus. Um, and then I'm kind of joking. I don't know. I just felt so lighthearted and excited. And I just kind of felt like he's so close. I could just feel it. And I said, oh, and I hear you have a horse. And I and and he knows my heart and he knows I love horses. And I, I used to horseback ride and, and I had a horse as a child. And I've always meant to one day I'm going to get my horse and I've never been able to. But, you know, life happens. And um, but I, I hear you have a horse and I want to go horseback riding with you in heaven. And so um so I could just feel so much happiness around me and I realized how much he, he, I, I realized he was really enjoying this talk and I could just feel it. You guys, I know it's hard to explain, but I just felt it. And I, for the first time, I just, I didn't have any worry coming to him in my prayer closet. I just came to talk and spend time with him. Um, and I just I wrote down it. I think that way of talking to him just more deeply describes our relationship he knows, he already knows I fear and respect him, but when I pray and talk to him as a friend, it also shows I love and trust him. And I, I said that before. Um, and so interestingly, I felt it, it's hard for me to hear his voice. I'm not one of those people who could just hear, you know, like I said, I'm not really a prophet. I couldn't really hear him talk to me, but I could hear his response. And he said, ask me anything. I'll give it to you. Oh my gosh. He just, I felt it. He felt, I just felt that. And I said, take me home. That's all I asked. Just take us home. Just take us home. And I know he knew my heart. He knew I was going to say that. And of course, you know, 
he knew that was my answer. But this is how, what I heard him say. He said, I need to show you something first. And at that moment, I knew he was going to give me a dream. Maybe it's my last dream. I don't know, guys. I don't, I'm not calling any dates here. You know, I'm, I'm wiser than to do that. But at the same time, there's so much going on. I'm about to tell you about this, about that in a second. Okay, so I just felt like he's going to show, he's got more to show me. And there's more I need to witness before we get caught up. Okay. Um, so I felt he was going to send me a dream and I knew it would be a special dream about him because it's been so long and I wanted a dream with him. It's just been so hard. I get symbols. I get, I do get answers to questions and things I've been pursuing questions on my heart. But I just, I said in my previous video, I just, when you've been in the presence of Jesus in a dream, you never forget it. And you just forever after you crave that feeling. Um, so <clears throat> Anyway, and then I didn't share this with you before, but in the process of talking to him, when I began to hear him, you know, just in my spirit, I just felt that conviction of that, of his responses to me. I was crying. I just felt it. It was so strong. And, um, and I felt such excitement because I realized again, how close this was, how close we are to him. You just sense his presence and you know, we are so close to coming home and it just overwhelmed me. So, um, anyway, I got my, my tears out and all that. And, um, I went back to bed. Okay, so then at 4.20, I wrote down here, 4.20, I woke up, and this time I went into the family room, and I just felt, okay, this is fourth watch. Let me go up, and I'm going to spend some time with Jesus. So I went out, and I went into the family room this time, and I just looked out the window. I find myself always looking at the sky, whether it's daytime, nighttime, watch, lift your heads and look for me, you know, as he says in the Bible, watch, and I find I'm always watching for him. So... Um, I stand up and I'm, I'm looking out at the dark sky and I thought about, and I think there might've been a full moon, but it wasn't as bright as I was thinking. Usually a full moon, I can just see it beaming through a window and this was behind the trees. So it was much, you know, it was early and early in the morning. So as I'm looking up and I'm thinking about that, I'm realizing, okay, this is fourth watch. And I was remembering when he was saying, watch, stay up and, and pray with me when he was in Gethsemane. And as I was just really meditating on that and thinking about that and how much what he went through and the turmoil. And I had just been reading, I think it was in the book of John. I think John is the only one where he describes Jesus being so terrified he was sweating blood. And I think John was the only one who noted that. And just the terror, knowing without a shadow of a doubt that that's about to happen to you and praying and calling out, calling out to your father and and just think, I was just really thinking about that and just thinking about what he was going through all alone, praying and just asking somebody, just pray with me, be with me, stand, you know, just watch with me. And I just, I just found myself saying, I'm so sorry, Lord, that nobody had been with you. Nobody stood with you during that time in the garden. And I said, Jesus, I would have stayed awake for you. And then I, I thought that, and then I quickly humbled myself, and I realized that I might have been weak too. His disciples, I'm sure they struggled to stay awake for them, for him. Um, they had loved him too. And I said, I would have tried to stay awake for you, Lord. I would have tried. I would have done everything I could have to really have tried to stay awake for you and to pray with you and just to be with you at that time. And then he reminded me, it's the fourth watch. You already are. You're with me right now. And I realize, oh my gosh, he's right. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm with him right now. I'm with him and I'm watching and I'm being with him. And I'm, I'm realizing now why this is so important. It shows, a, it shows the true faith in watching for him. And I'm not saying, you know, you're, you're not good enough if you're not getting up in the middle of the night to do this. And I didn't for a long time. I mean, sometimes I don't. And other times I just felt like last night I felt really called to do it. And I'm noticing more and more of my brothers and sisters. We're, we keep talking about this. More and more people are bringing this up going, I'm getting woken up. I'm getting woken up. And I feel really called to get up and pray. Um, so anyway, um, Okay, so I felt like I went on ahead and talked about that. So I got back to bed, and as I got back into bed, I realized I still haven't had my dream yet. He told me, I'm going to show you something. So I'm, I'm trusting. I'm like, I'm waiting for my dream. I, so it's 4.20 or a little after by, by then when I got back to bed. So I'm waiting for my dream. So I woke up this morning, and I had a dream. Okay, so here's my dream. Um, I wrote it down, but I, I probably can do it better by memory. Okay, so... All I remember, and I had some different dreams, but this is, and I, 
if I remember it, then I know he wants me to remember it for a reason. If there's stuff I can't recall, there's a reason I can't recall it. But this is what I clearly remember was. It looks, feels like I'm in a very long, huge room, okay? I don't know if, what, if it was inside a building. I can't even be sure if I was in a building. But I just saw a huge group of people all like in a long, long row. I mean, not even a row, just like huge, long people. But in this kind of, I guess, I, I, it's just a huge row of people, okay? But it was big masses of people. Here is this lion, and I see him coming from one end, and he's starting from the very tip of this group of people, and he starts running, and he is charging through this group of people, just going breakneck speed in a straight, perfect line. Now, the people, I'm listening, and I'm, I'm like up in the air observing this. I'm just meant to watch this. I'm he hearing, and in, in the thoughts of the people are hearing them speak. I'm not sure if they're talking or thinking, but they were saying, um, oh, it's just a, a lion. It's just like a lion like you'd see in the zoo, okay? They were just completely disregarding this lion. And yet they'd kind of come almost like to stop him, like they were starting to get in his way, but he blasted past them so fast they kind of went, <gasps> and they looked at him in amazement as he ran by. Then as he's going further down the road, there's another group, and the next group of people go, oh, it's just a lion. It's just a lion like you'd see in a circus or something, just one of those you know, broken down kind of lions that have been not really tamed, but, you know, controlled in a cage. And they were kind of moving toward him like, ah, oh, we're going to thwart him. But he whew, blasted right past them. And they kind of went, oh, and again, they looked on in amazement. Like they didn't really truly see him until he went whew, right past them. Okay, so I'm also noticing other lions in this group watching this one lion. And there's this one really enormous lion, and he was fierce and angry when he saw this one lion just going straight down the row. And I could tell he jumped to get into this lion's way, and whew, the lion went right past him. So this lion is going like this. He's, you can see, just going all the way down. There's, and there's groups of people all around him. He's just working his way straight line. Um, so... I'm just checking my notes here. Okay, so he's going chart. He's charging down this long straight path, and he just kept blasting past people. And they kind of disregarded him until he blasted past them, and they'd look on him in amazement. And again, I don't know what the symbolism of these other lions were, um, but I know that Satan is also. We know. Okay, the the main lion I knew was Jesus because he's the lion from the tribe of Judah, as it says in the Bible. We also know Satan is described as a lion pacing back and forth, roaring, like a roaring lion looking who's going to devour. So we've seen references to different, two different kinds of lions, okay? And I saw this one lion blazing past. People were just kind of discounting him until he, he blew past them and then they were woken up. Um, whereas this other evil lion was in among the people and thinking the thoughts of the people, or they were thinking the thoughts of that sinister lion who wanted to thwart this main lion going down the center and he couldn't, okay? Um, just as he got through the last of the people at the end of the line, he'd gone all the way through and he was coming to the very end. I knew there was no stopping him and I woke up and just as he had completed that circuit, he was going, he was charging out of the group and he was just, he had gotten to the end. Okay. And that's, I woke up and I thought, okay, wow, lion, that's Jesus. I know it's Jesus. And I just felt it was so strong and I felt excited. Like I knew something, like I, I had an understanding of something big, <laughs> but I didn't exactly know what this meant yet. So Okay, so it's early in the morning. Well, it's probably about 6.30 when I got up, 6 or 7 o'clock in the morning. So I'm going out, and um, as we're getting ready in the morning, I'm praying on this and thinking about it. And um, my little girls are watching a little cartoon that we look up on. Um, we kind of go on the Internet sometimes to find these videos, and other times we have some saved on our DVR called Little Bear. It's one of the few cartoons I like my girls to watch. I mean, they want to watch a cartoon, and they both love, love, love this cartoon. It's such a sweet cartoon. They don't make them like this anymore, where it's just all about family. It's it's so wholesome. It's just beautiful, a sweet little cartoon. So we're watching this one episode I had I don't remember ever really seeing before. They're watching it on the iPad. My husband had found it for them. And as I walk past them, I look over their shoulder and there is little bear riding on the back of a lion, just like my dream. And it was but it was the astrological Leo the lion in the stars. And I stopped, I thought Lord, is that my confirmation? That's so weird. I've never, of all the little bear ones I've seen hundreds of times because I watch them all the time. I, I don't remember seeing that. And I even, <laughs> I recorded it on my phone so I could show you guys just where this particular 
it was interesting because when I rewatched it, Father Bear was talking to Little Bear about the significance of the North Star. And this is all going to make sense in just a minute when I show you another video about what's going on right now with Leo the Lion. But at first I wasn't sure if I should pay attention because I'm really, really worry of anything astrological. Back in my new age days, I know that that's a slippery slope and I, I burned all my astrology books a long time ago. So I looked at that and I'm like, mm, I don't know if I really want that to be confirmation of Leo the Lion. I don't know. So I, I just kind of blew it off. Um, until I saw something just an hour ago that confirmed it a second time. But anyway, um, but let me just let you watch this and listen to what Father Bear says also about going home. Okay, let's see if you guys can see this. Okay, so and the the little cartoon goes on um, to show Little Bear himself becomes a little star symbol and he's in the sky and he's riding the lion. And then as he's riding the lion, he falls off the lion's back, slides down the Milky Way, and all of a sudden the stars start falling from the sky, just like in scripture it says the stars fall from the sky. So I'm seeing this lion, which I just literally came out of a dream and saw this lion then I, I walk into the next room and there's another lion and then there's stars falling from the sky and father bear saying when i go home when i think of you and want to go home and so and again i'm thinking hmm but is that my confirmation i'm kind of doubting it okay so then um just a few hours ago like maybe an hour ago i happened to come across a video do you guys watch um if you go to informedchristian.com um he has videos called um Oh, what's it called? I have to look it up. I'll put a link to his video here in the notes. Situation Room, I think. The Situation Room. And I've only seen a couple of them. Really good detail on here. Well, this particular one, he is talking about Leo the Lion is in conjunction right now. I think he said with Saturn. I, I could be wrong. I have to rewatch the video. I was trying to feed my kids while listening to this, so I might have missed it. But then he came up, he brought up a uh, and I took a still shot of it on my phone, and I'm sorry, it's, but this is what stopped me in my tracks. Okay, so, I don't, and I'm sorry if you can't really see it very well. Look at, there's Leo the lion, and he's walking in a straight line. He's doing, there's this, a line following him, if you can see my finger, from one, if you look up here, right above Leo, there's, he's following a line from here to here. In other words, he's walking in a straight line path like he did in my dream. And what this gentleman said on in his video, very detailed, and he said, Leo right now is in conjunction and it's coming together June 21st, which is tomorrow. I think Israel time at 1 a.m. June 21st. Now we don't know what's going to happen. But I just find it very interesting that I have this dream of a lion. Then the very next thing I see is the astrological symbol for Leo, as if telling me this, this, these two things go together. Here's your dream of a lion going in a straight path. I mean, charging down this path like he's on a mission. And he just was let, it's almost like he was let out of a cage and went, and he's out. And he's got a mission. He's, he's going somewhere. We know where he's going. Okay, so... Then I see this video saying Leo has traversed a path in a straight line, and now he's here he is. And this also, I think, was it just two days ago, was the one-year anniversary of the North Star, the um, the Star of Bethlehem. And I remember vividly when that happened last year, because I was telling, I was like yelling from the rooftops, the Star of Bethlehem, the signs are in the sky. I was telling all my friends about that. And 
it's now a one-year anniversary, and then this man, I'm sorry, I, I wish I knew his name from the, the Informed Christian video from the Situation Room, he had said that, um, as it says in the book of Esther, when she was preparing to be a bride, she had a year of preparation. So here is the year of the Star of Bethlehem, and now it's been a full year. The bride has had, the bride of Christ, who have had a full year of preparation. Many of us have been preparing for longer than that, but I know I certainly started really waking up almost a little over a year ago. Okay, so um, so that was my final confirmation. When I saw that picture, and again, I'll put a link. Please watch the video, and especially, I think it's at the 12 to timestamp for the 12-minute mark. It, you'll see where he comes up with that screen, and it shows the Leo the lion. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm kind of really abbreviating this. This video has gotten long already. So um, he gives, gives way more detail, and I, I'm just doing a very abbreviated version of what he said. He had so many things lining up right now, guys. So we we need to keep watch like more than ever before. And again, um, you know, I'm not setting any dates. I have hope <laughs> that this is it. But again, if it's not, we just keep looking because we know he is. It, this is now the time. If it's not this very next few days, it will be very, very soon. Come, Lord Jesus, we are ready. So God bless you guys. Lord Jesus, I plead your blood over this video. Lord Jesus, I plead your blood over my intercessory group. And Lord Jesus, I plead your blood over every single brother and sister watching this video right now. Lord, give us all ears to hear and eyes to see. Continue to help us hear your voice. Illuminate our path and help us follow your will, Lord Jesus. And we praise and thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, guys, I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.